All right, time for a little something we like to call Handsome Craig living right there in the corner. Of first in football, let me start you off in Buffalo. Four turnovers and 13 penalties on the 15 points they scored, Gregor, all in the fourth quarter. Uh, look, it is the preseason, but there does come a point where the stink of preseason, for some teams, not all teams, can kind of roll over into week one. Now, famously, the Bills, during their heyday with Jim Kelly and Thurman Thomas, never won a preseason game, and obviously it didn't matter. And this is a very good football team, but it was just ugly. It was ugly, and, and this is the problem with preseason because a lot of times, I, I, like, I credit – the Kansas City Chiefs are what they're doing and playing their guys. But it's because Patrick Mahomes has such a lock that he's leading this team with. He has a handle on the beat of the team and the guys taking the field. When you look at the Buffalo Bills, a lot of these guys just aren't out there knowing that I'm playing a football game. They're, they're more of the mindset of, you know what, I'm going to get these snaps in and then I'm done. I'm going to eat it. some hot dogs at halftime oh. and my day is over with. That's just the way it is. And it's hard to lock in. I'm not sitting here acting as though I was able to lock in for two series or one series every time I stepped on a sure. preseason football field because it's a challenge. But when you have your quarterback going out there and Josh Allen was out there, if he goes out there, you have to be able to lock it in because you understand that these are our most pride, prideful players and sure. most valuable players. Yeah, it's just weird. Like, you, know, you don't want to overreact to it, but sometimes it just looks so bad. It does. How do you not? You react to, which is, I think, why, not to go too far off on, on the topic for first in football, why the New York Jets are playing Aaron Rodgers. Like, the New York Jets scored six points against Tampa. They had the one good game against Carolina. They didn't look great in the, in the uh, Hall of Fame game. Mm -hmm. And you just want to have something that a coach can go, okay, we're good, yeah. now put the backups in. Yeah, and when you look at the Jets, you, you talk about the Jets, yeah. their struggle was the fact that they couldn't really score offensively. Well, you can't excite your fans or have your fans excited about what you're going to bring in week one against the Buffalo Bills if you're still struggling to score. I don't care who your quarterback is. It's like, yeah, we got Aaron Rodgers, but is it going to look similar to what we've been seeing all preseason long? Right. you got to give them And we're not going to see a lot of Aaron Rodgers against no. the Giants. I'd be shocked if you see more than a series, maybe two. Uh, and half those players are going to be handoffs anyway. Yeah. Uh, but you're going to have a sold-out building on Saturday. Much more on Jets Giants later in the week and later in the show. Let me go to a second in football. Everyone's favorite little guy, Deuce Vaughn, oh, yeah. has earned the backup running back spot oh, yeah. for the Dallas Cowboys. I'll tell you something right now. Draft him on your fantasy You better. Games. Draft him late, but draft this kid because my man can play football. I don't care how little the guy is. You, I, won't, I wouldn't even draft him late. I'm going to be honest. Like, the guys like this are problems for defenses in the National Football League because he's so short, you cannot see him until he hits the hole. <laughs> Tim Hardaway. Tim, you're not alone. Deuce Vaughn's going to make it to the he big got team, you, buddy. buddy. We got you covered. See you soon. Anyhow, that Tim's under the desk there. Um, no, it's great. Uh, and it's a feel-good story. By the way, the kid was a dominant running back. Yes. Where is he? Kansas, Kansas, Kansas State. State, wherever he was. Kansas State. So it's not like they just found him at a bus depot. You know what I mean? The guy's a football player. Yeah, he can play, man. He's put together, and, and there's been a <laughs> lot of – unlike quarterbacks at that position who are undersized. There's been a lot of running backs that are undersized, not his size, but that have skill sets that they thrive with and when they get opportunity. You know what else I like about it? You know how many dudes you've met or I've met, I'm sure you have in your lifetime at the gym or like a pickup game or like, yo, man, if I was only three inches taller, I would have gone pro. Yeah. Dude's four foot six. <laughs> I have a soft spot in my heart for little people. It's hard to overcome being little. And that dude's going to be in the NFL. NFL, which means every guy that you meet at the gym who's like, if I was only three inches taller, I would have gotten my shot. Dude's four foot tall and he's in the NFL. Four six to four foot tall. Three. Done it. I'm going to measure. I hear you. He might be 310. <laughs> I don't know what it is. All right, let me go to uh, third. It's Jimmy G. It is Jimmy G, and I know Jimmy G wins all the time. That's all he does. I, I'm not high on Jimmy G. I, I would love to see. I can't. I'm, 
I'm interested to see how he looks standing in the pocket because every time I've seen Jimmy G, he seems a little happy feet in the pocket. Mike, he's not yeah. settled and comfortable. It'll be interesting to see what this Raiders team looks like. By the way, those numbers are, there's only like three guys in the history of football that have that winning percentage and that average points per game and the touchdown to interception ratio in the history of football. And yet nobody, me included, thinks of Jimmy Garops Correct. as a top five quarterback. Correct. But all the guy does, to be fair, is win. You got to give him that. Top five quarterback. Nobody thinks of him as a top ten quarterback. Well, how could it be top ten? You have Daniel Jones in the hey, top right, Let me go too. to fourth. <laughs> let me go to fourth in football real quick. A.J. Brown talking about the Phila. Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I disagree with what A.J. Brown said there. I can tell you what's going to happen. You're not going to win 14 regular season games this year. You're going to be a very, very good team, and they should win the NFC East just based on the talent they have on both sides of the ball. But the schedule's harder this year. Uh, and not, I don't buy the notion of, oh, you sneak up on teams. It's the NFL. There is no such thing. But you play the AFC East this year, which is a better division, a deeper division than it has been in a long time because the Jets are for real now. And you're just not winning 14 games. Yeah, look, it, it's not even about the regular season for this team. Obviously, they're going to be a good team. They're going to make the playoffs, barring injuries at the positions that mean the most. This team is locked and loaded on getting back to the Super Bowl. Which they're and, not going to do. And changing the result. Like, and they have a really good shot to do that. I'm excited to see what this team looks like. I'm excited to see what that young man looks like in his second year under this coaching regime, the yeah. offensive coordinator with these receivers, uh, and, and, and see what it looks like. They've retooled better than any team in football. They lost a lot, and it seems like they got even better with some of the guys that they got. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to see what the Philadelphia Eagles. I know you don't like the Philadelphia Eagles no, just because I, I think they're the Philadelphia Eagles. I want to be clear. I don't like the Philadelphia Eagles, but it's them and the Niners as the two best team in the conference. I'm not going to be silly and say that, you know, they can't possibly make a run. 14-3 and three is very, very hard to yeah. do. By the way, in the second half of this season, they have the Chiefs, they have the Bills, yeah, they have last the Niners, nine tough. and you have Dallas twice. Uh, and you have the Giants twice. The back end of their schedule's tough. It's tough. Like, they have two buys. That's the Cardinals in, in the bye week. Yeah, they do have two buys. You're, you're right. But that is a, if you just look three, six, eight, the final eight games, Kansas City, Buffalo, San Francisco, yeah, that's a tough. Dallas, Seattle. I mean, they have one win there that you can guarantee and lock in. That's it. One against the Cardinals. They will win in week 17. I know they blew the Giants out last year all three times they played them, but that's a tough schedule. They're not going 14-3. Coming up, your mid-show headlines and all the latest breaking news and stories from the NFL and beyond right after this on FS1. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.